is 13 minutes past eight. Well, how much politics do you want with your music? Hey, Shehard's new album is called F-V-E-Y, which is an abbreviation of the way they write Five Eyes, of course, which is the collaboration between us, the Americans, Canadians, Australians, and the Brits on spying. And as Rolling Stone said, if you think they were pissed off before, you ain't heard nothing yet. And John Too Good and Carl Kippenberger are back with us. Good to see you guys again. Hey, so so what's, what's, with the, what's with the anger here? What's going on? Um, I, I think we're just all a bit uncomfortable with the idea of, of if people do want to listen to our um, personal sort of communications between, say, me and my mum, um, they do have the option of doing that at the moment. You know, and uh, I, I know people do sort of turn around and go, well, if you've got nothing to hide, mate, you know, what's your problem? Well, huh. I actually just don't like the idea of someone listening huh. to my personal stuff. See, that's my that's my yeah. argument. See, I'm I'm one of those people. I, I I've got nothing to hide, and I don't really care. Yeah, I'd rather feel safe. Is my broad argument. We live in New Zealand. Mm. I think I feel pretty safe down here personally. Yes. The idea of um, terrorism seems to me a quite a long way away for me personally. I just think um, th- there's other things we should be worrying about as a society. I think. So is this this whole album isn't about, isn't about that? You've got you've no, got no, you've got a so, socio-economic argument in there. You got are you Carl as angry as? Oh yeah. So, I, so you're all as a group angry. Yeah, we're an angry. You share group. you share the same views. It's not like yeah. you're going, hey man, let's tame this down. Like the a rest. cage of tigers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the fi- it's quite something to do the five eyes thing as the album title though, isn't it? It's one thing to sing songs about issues. I just thought it was a good. Uh, you could it would be good for imagery, and it's a good image. Five eyes. You know what does that mean? It would make people think about it, and uh, I think the people we got to do the design, you know, alt design. They really grabbed that idea and made a, a great image, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Ninth album? Yes. And the one you most love? At the moment. Yeah, we're <laughs> definitely in love. Oh, is it, fl- is it fleeting, the love for an album? No, you put, you put so much hard work into into every album, you know, and I guess we feel, we, we feel all the work that we've done mm. in this album right now. So, um, you know, it's definitely not fleeting. Take us through how it works. So, so I can't. I was trying to work out when you were last here, and it was a wee while. It was a couple of years ago. I, 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 I think. Yeah. So, how does an album begin? What do you do? How does it come together? How long does it take? Where does it get done? Uh, this one was different than the last few in the fact that we did it very fast and very urgently. Um, we, we, we worked like total office hours. We worked from between ten a.m. to one p.m. Only three hours a day, but all phones were off, no Facebook, no emails, and we were there to work. And we worked hard, and we got about 55 ideas after five weeks. Jazz came down, flew down from England. Uh, We worked every day without a weekend for two months solid, and uh, he worked us to the bone. Two songs a day, bang, 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 until he was happy. Then we could go home. Well, explain who Jazz is, because that's a good story in itself. Jazz Coleman is um, a, a British singer and conductor of orchestras actually that's what he does for a living now um in fact i think he's in bahrain uh, yeah at the mm. moment pr- uh, yeah conducting an orchestra doing a led zeppelin tribute thing or something for the sultan of bahrain or something crazy he's he's got a weird charmed life that guy but he's anyway he used to be in a post-punk british band called killing joke who had yeah, a massive yeah. worldwide hit around the 80s called love like blood which which we were brought up with and um he ended up living in on the great is it great barrier yeah, he ended up buying some land on Great Barrier Island. Island. Yeah, yeah, and like he, in the eighties or something. I think, and then he th- thought this was going to be the last, the last place to survive the Holocaust. Or yeah, or some sort of uh, yeah, some sort of like Armageddon. Him, if Armageddon, Armageddon was going to come, New Zealand was, was going to be, be the, the last place, place. That, that survived. So that was him. And so you were. Uh, he worked with you in the early days, didn't he? Yes, we made our first album with him. Uh, how long ago? Like uh, 20, ninety-three. Yeah, ninety-three. Yeah. Ninety-three. And we actually opened the studio, York Street Studios in Auckland. We were the first band in there. He he basically was an investor in that studio, and he used us as a like the flagship band. And he, uh, I think, he discovered us by talking to two guys that had caught been caught robbing a chemist in, on Great Barrier Island. Island and yeah. said, what what is the cool the coolest band what, in the country? What band are you listening to? <laughs> <laughs> what an awesome story! And they said you. They gave yeah. him a L- they gave to, him a tape. Yeah, they L- listened to tape. by criminals. Yeah, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, totally. And so and so, my understanding was you hadn't dealt with him in that since that period though. Yes, and yeah. um, basically we we signed a little contract with him to make the first two albums. But when we went to make the second album, he was in London, I think, um, conducting the London Philharmonic doing the a Rolling. Was it the Rolling Stone? I think it was or? Pink Floyd oh, uh, Pink symphonic. Floyd. And he said, look, I, I'm not available. I, I can't make it back. 
go ahead and we so we made Killjoy what became the Killjoy mm. album, which is our second album when he came back into the country two months later he went hey you didn't you made it without me give me five thousand bucks <laughs> <laughs> and we were all working like day jobs and like record stores and and uh phil was a postman so we all had to like save a hundred dollars out of our pay each week were you aggrieved very i didn't talk to him for 15 years uh. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I just, on principle, I thought, what? Well, so we have to pay the rock star <laughs> while we're out of our sort of day jobs. So um, how did you get over that then? Uh, we saw him in London uh, about three, four years ago, and uh, he was basically, he, he wasn't drinking. He very straight because when we did work with him initially, he was a drinker, mm. which meant that he had a bit of a mean streak, and uh, he'd sort of got rid of that mean streak. And he, he was always very driven, very intelligent. I mean, he's got a degree in music. A uh, very smart guy. Without the alcohol, he's like, he's nicer, isn't he? He's, he's, he's more, way more focused. Way more well, focused. Way more. What usually guy. happens, isn't it? Well, I, yeah, guess, yeah. I, I guess it is. These are good stories. Let's take a brief break. More in a moment. John Too Good, Carl Kippenberger, She Hard. It is nineteen past eight. The thing that fascinates me from the business side of, of all of this. So the release of the album, you can get a standard album, which yep. is an eleven-track album, a CD only plus four bonus, mm. a, an iTunes exclusive version, and a double vinyl. Who th that's clever market. Who thinks of that? I don't know. I guess we have a wish list. I yeah. mean, we always want vinyl versions of our albums, and it hardly ever happens. And uh, yeah. It usually happens after the fact. But, um, I mean, we, we worked in record stores like 20 years ago or something, yeah. so we fell in love with the, the end product that you mm. get from a band. Yeah, like the artwork. Just just sort of, the packaging is just to so us. important. The, the, you know, the sort of limited edition idea, getting something that only a few people are going to get. I mean, we're, we're total music fans, so if we can create that with our own band, then we will, you know. Do you, is, a lot, is that sort of thing easier nowadays with the net and the, you know, the downloads and all that sort of stuff as opposed to shipping hard product? It's easier to get things just from the net, I yeah. think. Um, it's just but more I think, convenient. You know? I think it's more important to, to make the physical version more worth... 100%. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Yes. If you're going to have a physical version, you might as well make it worthwhile. Oh, Otherwise, yes. what's the point? I mean, I still like reading an actual book. Yes. You know, so... And, I and like an album with notes. Yes. yes. Without yeah. a doubt. And and vinyls had a massive resurgence, actually. Like, while the CD sales have been dropping, vinyl's been going up. Because it's it's something that you're totally involved with. Yeah. You know, the artwork's big. The You have to get up off your bum and put the record over, turn the record over at half time. You've got to have a, seed, uh, a turntable. Yes. Turntables are beautiful, can beautiful, be beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Got to have the good amp, the good speakers. Well, Is it, it, all, it, all, it all links at awesome. the end It all links at the end of the day. You're mentoring kids, right? Yes. School kids. Why? Okay. And what do you learn from it? I, um, I actually learn heaps about... Uh, I st there's tons of talented kids around New Zealand. I, I can get to steal all their great ideas. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, um, I think... I think around the time my dad passed away three years ago, I just I just thought I've got all this information in my brain, and I and I saw how quick dad's life went, and I went that's going to happen to me. So I'm going to while I've got a chance, I'm going to get that information, and if I can help some kids make like avoid some of the mistakes I've made. Oh really? So this is beyond music that you mean to them? It's no, it's just well, it's actually you know I just work with the music students, but but I basically tell them straight up, you know, if you. It doesn't matter if you're going to be doing music later on. Whatever you do, you've got to love it, yeah. and you've got to do it more than anybody else and get better at it. Isn't that funny? Because that's the um, that message never changes, no, is it? I mean, the the, 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 <laughs> exa exactly. No matter how the world changes and the kids change and all of that, the fundamentals of life actually never change. Yeah, if you right. if, if you're passionate about what you do and you're good at what you do and you're determined to do well. You, you by and large will. will you, you by will. and large will do well. Yep. Do you think about that much, given that you've been around for 112 years now, and you are one of the great <laughs> success stories of New Zealand music? But we got yeah, we got called, what we got called a mountain range of New Zealand. Oh, yeah, the Tararas. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That's not bad. That's rock good. music. Yeah, I was something. I take that. Was that the plan though when you set out 25 years ago? Uh, I don't think you think about that. No, you know? I, I think we actually went off course because we wanted to be the biggest band in the world by the year two thousand. Yeah. We still haven't got there. No, but um, we're um, definitely. I, I think in my twenties, I don't even think I was thinking properly anyway. <laughs> no. um, I and being in this band, it was it was more of a day to day thing in a way because we didn't know what we were doing next month. Well, your life's weird. I mean, he, he did a he, he did a school C exam and then the next day he was on stage in front of what forty thousand people at Athletic supporting ACDC. Wow. 
It's so, amazing. So life's been weird like that ever since. But life is good, though. Life's great. Yeah. Life, life is good. Is well, good luck with the album, and um, and you've got the concert in Christchurch, which yes. is very important, too. So yes. that's a, that's in the early part of next month. September and, 12th. And that's yeah. being streamed, which is good. It's a pay-per-view thing. Yeah. So not only is it being streamed, that's a, that, that's a way of the future, too, surely, isn't it? To I, see a concert from anywhere in the world to pay-per-view. That's I, a brilliant idea. It's a good idea. It's a new idea. And we're going to make sure we give our profits to uh, the Earthquake Relief Fund in Christchurch, because they're doing it hard down there, and if we can help out, we'll help out. Brilliant. Good to see you as always. Awesome. Cheers. Good on you. Thanks. Take care. Carl Kippenberger and John Tugut of She Hard. That is us for the day. Back tomorrow. Happy days.